things as objectively as possible. Don't pile judgments on top of something. A pipe breaks, it's not a bad thing. It's a broken pipe and you're gonna fix it. Someone is late, that's not a life-ending event. They're just late. And so I'd focus on seeing things as objectively as possible. You're listening to episode 180 of the Fitness Business Podcast. We'd like to thank this month's premier podcast partner, One Fit Stop. Scheduling, member management, point of sale, member apps, and multi location support that will set your business up for success. Welcome to the show, everyone. I'm your host, Chantal Broderick. Thank you for joining me. This week, I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to chat to author and media strategist, Ryan Holiday. Ryan is the author of six books, including Ego is the Enemy, The Daily Stoic, and the book that we're focusing on today, The Obstacle is the Way, in which Ryan shares stories and strategies on how to turn even the most insurmountable obstacles into advantages. In addition to being an author, Ryan was formerly the Director of Marketing for American Apparel, and he's the founding partner for Brass Check Marketing. So whilst I was chatting to him, I couldn't resist taking a few minutes to tap into his marketing expertise as well. Here's a quick overview of what we cover in today's interview. In relation to his book, The Obstacle is the Way, Ryan starts by explaining stoicism. We discuss turning adversity into an opportunity for growth and how to handle obstacles when they arise in our personal and professional lives. In regards to marketing, Ryan shares advice for a gym owner or manager who needs to ensure their business stands out from the crowd. We chat about the three most important marketing rules every fitness business owner should adhere to, and we finish off today with Ryan's three tips for handling objections in the workplace. Before we get into the interview, there is one last exciting bit of news I want to share with you. Ryan Holiday is the keynote for the 2018 Athletic Business Show, which is coming up in New Orleans this November. So it was an absolute privilege to have the chance to chat to him before the event. And I want to give a quick shout out and a big thank you to Peter and Sue from Athletic Business for organizing this interview with Ryan. I've included information and links to the AB show in today's show notes. We're about to transition into this week's interview, but first I want to thank this month's premier podcast partner. One Fit Stops scheduling, client management, programming, and payment collection tools will set your business up for success. To find out more, go to onefitstop.com. Enjoy this week's interview with Ryan Holiday. Ryan, welcome along. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. It's a pleasure. I recently read your book, The Obstacle is the Way, and throughout your book, you refer to Stoicism and you reference case studies from ancient philosophers. Can you explain Stoicism in simple terms? I, I can. You know, when, when people hear ancient philosophy, they think, you know, it's going to be very impractical, it's going to be very theoretical. And what's so wonderful about Stoicism is that it is the opposite of all those things. It's very practical and it's very simple. The, the definition that I give, obviously, I don't want to sort of sell the philosophy short, but my definition of Stoicism is basically the, the Stoic believes that they don't control the world around them, but they always control how they respond. And so this is really a superpower. If you think about it, it, it gets us to focus on sort of you know, self-discipline, uh, on making sure we're not jerked around by destructive emotions. It makes us focus on where we can have influence or where we can make a difference. It, it makes sure that we're not throwing ourselves, you know, at things that are, are beyond us. And so it's, it's this sort of philosophy that I think uh, lends itself very well to entrepreneurship. It, it lends itself very well to athletics, to business. It's the kind of it's sort of an operating system for living in a world that's you know chaotic and you know challenging and a, a world that we're trying to you know make a place for ourselves in. Ryan, the case studies that you share in the book they reference how we can actually turn adversity into opportunity for growth. Can you share one of those examples with us? Well, so the, the Stoics believe that. Although things might go wrong, like we're, we, you know, we set out to do one thing and it doesn't work out or some obstacle comes uh, you know, between us and that object. Well, the Stoics would say, well, this is just an opportunity 
for us to do something else that's, you know, equally beneficial, that's also an opportunity for excellence. And so, so again, it's this sort of redirection of our emotions. It's not trying to make whatever we wanted to happen, happen at, at, at sort of at all costs. It's saying, well, what is possible here? What, what can I do? And let me focus my energy there. And so, you know, I, I focus on all these stories from, from history and from philosophy because w- what you tend to see is that is how successful people have always operated and, and, and do always operate. You know, um, I talk about Marcus Aurelius uh, in, in the book. He's a, sort of one of the most famous Stoics. He also happens to be the emperor of Rome. Um, but he never wanted to be the emperor of Rome. And in fact, he wanted to be a philosopher. That's what he was trained for. That's what he thought his calling was. And he, he somehow finds himself, you know, basically the, the leader of the world. And, you know, originally, uh, you know, sort of he, he has some resistance to this. And then he realizes, oh, actually, this is the grandest possible stage for me to practice this philosophy. This is, I will have far more influence here, far more opportunities here to do these things that I say that I believe in. And, and, and I can have far more impact than I ever thought. Um, and so it's, it's again, it's, a, it's sort of about putting aside our resistance and embracing the opportunities that are inherent in, in, in everything that comes our way. You know, I think it's fair to say that in business and in life, we're, we're faced with challenges. And for many mm-hmm. of us, our initial reaction is to feel stressed or, or feel angry or just get upset. So when those obstacles arise, how do you think we can best handle the situation? Well, the, the Stoic wants you to focus on seeing it as objectively as possible. Epictetus is one of the Stoic philosophers says, you know, it's not things that are upset us, but it's our judgments about them, right? So something happens, that's an objective event, it, it happens. But then we decide to label it unfair or a setback or unexpected or frustrating or hopeless. Like these are labels that we put on it and they don't change the event, but they do change how we feel about it. And so the Stoics say, that, you know, the first thing we want to do is sort of make sure that we're not piling, we're not making a bad situation worse by labeling it a bad situation. And so this sort of, I, I think most of us, when we face adversity, make that adversity harder by, you know, throwing ourselves a pity party or reacting emotionally to it. And, you know, all of this is taking away energy that we could be directing at solving that problem. Now, we are going to take a completely different change of pace now. (laughs) When I I shared your bio with everyone earlier, I mentioned, of course, your marketing background. So you were the director of marketing for American Apparel for six years, and you're the founding partner for Brass Check Marketing. So there is no way I could have you on the show without actually (laughs) tapping into that marketing expertise. Now, to give you a bit of background, Ryan, the fitness industry, it's a crowded market. I'm sure you know that. There's lots of competition. There's new facilities opening up every single week in new locations. So from from your perspective, what advice would you give to a gym owner or a manager who needs to ensure that their business stands out from the crowd? So I believe that each and every person is you know, completely unique, right? We have a a unique set of DNA. We have a, a unique environment that we were raised in. We had unique parents. We have have had unique experiences. We're, we're totally unique, right? And yet when we start businesses, so much of what we do is copying other people. And then we wonder why we don't stand out. And so I, I know this isn't going to necessarily feel like marketing because people think that marketing is promotion, but marketing is really how your idea gets out into the world or your business gets heard about by people. And so what I would say is I would look at the first thing I would do if I was a gym owner looking to expand or grow or get my first customers, I would go, is, you know, how do I stand out in the market? You know, if you are opening a gym and it is exactly like all the other gyms and there isn't anything that your customers or friends can, can you like the reason CrossFit exploded is that CrossFit was very different than everything else. And the reason that P90X exploded is that it was different than everything else. And the reason that most of the products that we use and talk to other people about, the reason we do that is that they have something special. They have an angle or, you know, something distinct about them. And that's not an accident. And we have to, 
before we put promotional efforts into our product, we we do well to focus on improving and adding and reshaping what we're trying to sell in such a way that it is inherently marketable. I have this memory, this vague memory in my head that I read that you are, are you a runner and a CrossFitter? I, uh, I am, yes. Oh, right. I did, I did hear right. Yeah. So tell, tell me, I'm just going to go slightly off script. I'm interested to know, for, for an author, for someone who lives a very busy lifestyle like you do, what does exercise bring to your life? I mean, it, it's, it's everything to me. You know, so, so much of my day is obviously sitting there thinking. It's being inside my own head. And so to have something as part of my routine every day, you know, I, I do some form of strenuous exercise. Usually I, I run or I swim. Uh, sometimes I, I end up going to the gym. But having that thing that's so different allows me to put my work aside and get into a different headspace. And I, I would say that, you know, probably... 30% of what I've written was, was, was created or came to me while I was, you know, working out in one form or another. And so, you know, I think this idea of, you know, so if I was, if I was uh, working in a gym all day, I'd have some quiet time where I was writing or thinking that would be the opposite. I think this ability to go from sort of hot to cold or night to day or whatever, this opposite, I think it creates insights that are very beneficial. Mm, great answer. So Ryan, let's, let's get back onto marketing for a second. So what would, yeah. you, what would you say are the three most important marketing rules that every fitness business owner should adhere to? Yeah. So, uh, three rules, I would say one, uh, you know, be something unique and different and distinct. And this is the best marketing decision you make. I'd say two, you have to know what a customer is worth. I'm always shocked. You know, people are spending tons of money on advertising or promotion or whatever. And I go, what's a customer worth to you? And they don't have a number, you know, they don't know that, you know, an average member is worth $112 a year. The lifetime value is $700. They don't know what a customer is worth. And so it's like, how can you know whether your marketing is being effective or not? And then number three would be that word of mouth is the most powerful form of marketing there is. And so often what I do with clients is I go, look, where are your customers coming from now? Who are your customers now? And how can we turn those people into evangelists for what we're doing here? How can we use the people who have already used the product as a form of advertising or a form of referrals? And, and let's not think about anything else until you know, we get those three things crossed off. I've got just one more question for you, Ryan, and that is going back to our original conversation. And I'm wondering if you can share with us your top three tips for handling obstacles in our workplace. Sure. The, the first would be to see things as objectively as possible. Don't pile judgments on top of something. A pipe breaks, it's not a bad thing. It's a broken pipe and you're going to fix it. Someone is late. That's not a life ending event. They're just late. And so I'd focus on seeing things as objectively as possible. Two, I would manage, you know, let's manage our emotions. I think too often, you know, particularly in athletics where we think that passion is very important, but, you know, a player who's too passionate is the one who gets a technical when a bad call comes in from a ref or, you know, takes things too far or gets caught up, right? And so it's sort of managing our emotions. I think this is, this is essential. And then I think the third part is having this sort of determination and perseverance. If these things were easy, if starting your own business or succeeding in fitness was easy, everyone would do it. And there wouldn't, it, and, and there wouldn't be any money in it, right? If uh, you know, getting people healthy was as simple as saying, hey, you should get healthy, here's why, there wouldn't be a need for any fitness professionals. It would all take care of itself. And so the fact that it's hard, the fact that you know, most people fail at it, these seem frustrating, but they're in fact good things. That's what's created the ability to make a living doing and teaching and, and providing value. And so those would be those would be three quick rules. Thank you so much for sharing those with us. Now, I, of course, mentioned right at the start of the show that you are the keynote for the 2018 Athletic Business Show. Tell us just briefly what attendees can expect to see from your keynote presentation. Well, we're going we're gonna to walk through this philosophy that has been the secret to the success of, of emperors and gold medal athletes and 
brilliant entrepreneurs and artists that, that, that it's helped people for thousands of years overcome some of the hardest problems that the world has ever created. And we're going to do it in a really practical, accessible way. It's going to leave everyone with real lessons and real strategies for being better at what they do. Ryan, I want to say thank you so much. As I said right at the start, I'm really excited to see your keynote this year. I'm very grateful for you taking the time to come and join us on the show today. It's an absolute honor. And a quick reminder to everyone, make sure that you go along. We're going to put all the links in today's show notes for Ryan's website, for your books. uh, And so we'll make sure that everyone goes and checks those out as well. So Ryan, thank you so much for joining us today on the Fitness Business Podcast. I appreciate it and I can't wait to see everyone as well. Are you interested in increasing your center's income and your trainer's income from small group training? Tribe Team Training is the new way to get more members engaged in small group training and paying extra. Click the Tribe Team Training link in the show notes or go to tribeteamtraining.com.au forward slash podcast for your free formula to see how much income you can make from small group training. Pre-Core Quick Fire 5. This week's Pre-Core Quick Fire 5 guest is founder and director of social media at Think Tank Social, Sam Mutima. Sam, welcome along and thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thanks, Chantelle. Brilliant to be here. Now, we like to kick off every single show with our Pre-Core Quick Fire 5. So tell everyone, why do you do what you do? That's a really great question. Um, I love to innovate. When I see an opportunity in the marketplace, I want to own it. And 10 years ago, I saw an opportunity in social media and decided that where there was people, there was opportunity, there was money. And I wanted to play in that space. And I'm all about education. And I pretty much grew an agency off the back of identifying a gap in the market and wanting to to own it. So that's why I do what I do. (laughs) And what's one ritual that helps you become better at what you do? I like to spend time with people that are better than me and I'm sure I do that once a week. So whether that's a mentor, whether that's someone at another agency, whether that's a business owner, um, I just want to be able to understand how they've become successful at what they do and then I take little gold nuggets away and I start to implement that into what I'm doing on a weekly basis as well. And I found since I've been doing that, I've just propelled so much forward in my business because you can kind of shortcut or short track along the way and not make the mistakes that they have. So there, that's one ritual that I stick to. Surround yourself with better people than you. That's a great one. And are there any apps or systems that you use to stay in control of your workload? Yeah. So our company uses um, an app and a program called Harvest. So basically that's to track tasks, billable hours and where that time's going, how profitable we are on a job and what's coming in. And we can project workflow that out with different people at different times. So we're across the board all the time and what's coming into the agency and what's being delivered upon. So it's, it's a project management system essentially. Yeah. Yeah. And is that specifically designed for agencies? I haven't heard of it before. Is it, is, can anyone use that? No. Yeah. Anyone can use it and it's just really easy to use. Any team member can log in at any time. It's really visual and that's what we like about it. We're, we're a creative agency, but this can apply to any business really because it's simple, it's visual um, and it's really easy to use and it's quite graphical as well. So Fantastic. Thank we you like that. that. That's great. Okay. Is there one book, podcast or blog that you'd recommend and why? That's a really great question as well. At the moment, I'm listening to Gary Vaynerchuk's podcasts. Mm-hmm. Um, I absolutely am fascinated by this guy and I've been following him since 2008, pretty much when I started my agency. And he just touches on personal development. He touches on business. He touches on digital and social and really like building teams and leadership. So he ticks all the boxes and I tune into his podcast and I've bought his books as well. I just resonate with him. He's not for everyone. He's pretty full on and out there, but um, yeah, that's the type of person I am. So yeah, I strongly recommend that you check him out at least. I know that a lot of our listeners listen to uh, to Gary Vee as well. So that's a popular answer. And um, just give us a quick overview about what we're going to be focusing on during your main interview next week. Yeah. So we're going to be focusing on social media strategy and how you can actually apply it. Um, some of the key components for Facebook and Instagram, um, whether you should really be paying as part of your your social media marketing strategy, and also, I suppose, flagging some of the advantages for social media and some of the things that you need to be aware of if you are going to implement a program into your gym or if you're a personal trainer, really going to implement that into everything you're doing on a day-to-day basis. So really, we're going to refine that and give you some really top tips and giveaways and go-to next steps um, from everything that we've pretty much learned over the last 10 years. 
Fantastic. Well, Sam, thank you so much for joining us today for the pre-call Quick Fire Five. Thanks, Chantel. Appreciate it. Before we finish off today, a quick reminder that all the resources, the links, and a transcript for today's show can be found at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Thank you to our foundation partner, Active Management. They have an amazing gift for you all. Their number one selling checklist is yours for free, and it will turn your About Us page on your website into a lead generating page. All you need to do is go to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com forward slash active for your free download. Thank you for joining me for another week of the show. I look forward to seeing you next week. And remember, what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. Oh,